All right, third try. <laughs> we gotta get it right this time. Anyway, welcome back to Robot Chores. And I'm Steve Jennings from Grass Horse. And uh, today we're going to be working on uh, doing some precision modeling of a model airplane servo. This brand is, um, this one's from High Tech. It's called the HS645MG. And um, if you've been following along with, uh, with uh, uh, robot chores, you know that we've been working on trying to make a puppet mover, which basically moves uh, these uh, cutout characters um, in the backgrounds. And so to do so, we're gonna need to, we're gonna run them with uh, airplane, airplane servos. And so to properly uh, create the parts that we need to be able to make that uh, mechanics, we're gonna need to actually build it in uh, in a 3D program, and then uh, output it to a to output it with a 3D printer to uh, ABS plastic or PLA uh, filament with, uh, into an actual model part. So, anyway, we had a uh, we had a comment on one of the last uh, videos where um, someone had posted about uh, um, whether you use Blender for 3D printing uh, or use more of like a like, like a computer aided design program. And uh, they they have kind of given up trying to use Blender for for uh, making parts uh, for 3D uh, for 3D printing. And I understand for sure. I understand the frustration of uh, trying to use Blender for 3D printing. It can be very very taxing um, on your nerves uh, when you're trying to make something that is fairly precise and and, and precision made. Uh, because of the issues with, uh, um, you know, that we were talking about in the other videos, in that uh, uh, often when you add subdivision surface modifiers to objects in Blender, it completely um, changes the scale of the object. Or not, not completely, but it, it definitely alters uh, the, the, the scale of the objects, and uh, it can be a challenge. But there's a huge advantage in that one, well, Blender is, is freely available for people to download too. If you're interested in 3D animation, well, if you're modeling in Blender for doing uh, parts that you're gonna 3D print versus parts that you're going to create for a character, um, you know, you're, you're using the same skills and that's why I use it. And I think it's been very helpful uh, to be able to use the same tool to make the parts for robots that I would then use to make um, um, the, the exterior shell and, uh, and the actual like faces and, and, and pieces like that. Whereas if I was trying to do it in an engineering program, I don't think I could have that kind of creative sculpting ability that you can get out of Blender. So I, I see a, a big value of doing it in Blender and uh, that's kind of how I'm gonna show you how to use Blender to to do 3D printing because I have spent a lot of time doing it. If you look at that character up there, I spent like nine months getting that character to um, operate and function and the like. And we'll eventually get back to um, trying to get him operational again so that we can show that in future videos. But before we can do that, I wanted to start at the very basics so that people that wanted to learn how to do 3D modeling, precision 3D modeling so that they can um, build things for 3D printing have some sort of resource to do so. All right, so um, again, we're gonna be modeling uh, this piece here today. We have, um, if I can find it, we have some photos that I took uh, that we're gonna use uh, for reference and then, uh, and that we'll then pull into, uh, into Blender. We might have to modify them in Photoshop first. I don't know, I'm gonna try not to. But, um, but we may need to. And, uh, and we're gonna have a very important tool that this is where I got hung up before, is that uh, I didn't have one of these, which is a, it's a micrometer. You can get these at, um, a lot of hardware stores have them. Uh, I believe this one was from Harbor Freight or I ordered it online. Uh, they're you know, anywhere from like you know, 12 bucks to 20 bucks. Uh, for these, and I, I probably have, honestly, we have about four of them around, but these are the only pair I can find. But that's the reason why we have four of them, so I can at least find one pair. <laughs> so, anyway, okay, so let's um, hop into Blender, and I'll kind of show you 
around with what um, um, around this tool here a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just make uh, make it uh, reload the the, the 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 main scene here, and um, I'm gonna do a right off the bat. I'm gonna do a save as, and I'm gonna blast over this. I shouldn't do that, right? But I'm gonna blast over that because <clears throat> it is the right naming and. Okay, yeah, I'm not supposed to, not supposed to blow over ex existing files if you don't have to. But I did it because that one wasn't, I could have thrown that away anyway and everything else. So anyway, let's get rid of the camera, the light. And, and um, to select things, I'm doing a right click select. You can also uh, do a left click select. You can, you can change your up here in user preferences. You can change it to be a, a left click select. Um, with, uh, with this uh, application, uh, but I don't do it. I, I leave it in right click select. I don't know if it's system or selection. Um, I can never find it. People often, the only time I ever look for it is that somebody has uh, selected it and um, selected the other one where they do like left click select and like and I'm making everything confusing. So if you have used other 3D animation softwares, you probably want to set it up for left click select. Um, I've used other 3D animation softwares, but I've used Blender enough now that I actually really prefer the right click select, especially since a lot of times I'll be using um, a Wacom pen um, for this process. So, and that's how my Wacom pen is set up, hopefully. And so anyway, cool. Let's, um, what we have here is we have an initial cube, and if I want to go in and edit this, I can hit tab, and it takes it from down here from object mode to tab into edit mode, which then allows me to edit this object, okay? And this object is made up of vertices, right? And it's made up of edges, right? And it's made up of faces, <coughs> and right, and so obviously, two vertices make up an edge, and and at least the minim at minimum, um, three edges make up a face. Okay, that'd be a triangle, or three vertices make a face at a minimum. Um, we're gonna try and for the most part, when, as we're going through and modeling, we're gonna try and keep everything in quads, uh, and uh, that's because. Whenever you, um, whenever you need to subdivide things, things subdivide uh, much better and more evenly when you have quads. When you have triangles, it's, it gets things, um, <clears throat> it's harder for it to subdivide uh, nicely. All right, so first off, I wanna take it, I wanna take it all the way back down to just one point. I'm gonna, so, I, so I did a right click on that, that vertice down there. And I'm gonna do a control I, I'm gonna select everything else. I'm gonna hit the X to, to um, delete. And I'm gonna delete, vert I can delete vertices, edges or faces, I'm gonna delete vertices. And so down here we have one, um, we have one vertice left, okay? And I did a right click on it. You'll also see this like little thing out here floating around. That's the 3D cursor and in my, in my opinion, that's one of the best reasons that you'd want to use um, Blender, is that this is a super, super handy tool. And um, you can, it's basically a cursor that exists in three-dimensional space. I hit N to bring open, to open up this um, bar over here. And under a 3D cursor here, you can actually control the X, Y, and Z placement uh, of that cursor. So if you want to go back to the origin or the center of the, the scene, you can just type zero, 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 and there it goes. If you hold shift S, I have this, this vertice selected. If I hold shift S, I can say cursor move to what's selected and zip the three cursor moves over here. And so that's pretty handy. If I go to shift S, I say cursor go to the center. It moves that three cursor back to the center. If I go shift S and I say selection, move to cursor, it moved that vertice right to Right to that, uh, uh, right to the origin there, where the 3D cursor was at. Okay. So now we have a scene with only one vertice in there, and I want to 
I now want to do some uh, measurements. Um, <clears throat> now, we're going to operate today in millimeters today. And keep in, and I'm doing it for the world, not necessarily for myself. I pretty much, I actually am kind of weird in that I do like to model in inches. But I think that for a worldwide audience, I think people would probably greatly prefer the metric system. And American folks probably should... Uh, you know, at least learn how to use the metric system as well. And, it, and for modeling things, it is a, a whole lot easier. So anyway, um, you can also, in Blender, you can go in and you can set what your unit is, whether it's centimeters, feet, inches, kilometers, meters, miles, whatever. I'm going to leave it right there at Blender units as just a preset. And uh, because that's, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. I like it. I like it that way. And uh, and so if what I'm pushing here is now is I'm pushing. If you go over to your number pad and you push one, if I just push one, it you could you're looking down the y axis, right? Because down here it tells you that you've got the z axis is going this way and the x axis is going this way. You're looking down the y axis. If I hit Control one, it actually goes the opposite way down that down. Um, uh, down the y-axis, and this is called back perspective. So one is front perspective, control one is back perspective. If I go to three, that's the right perspective, and control three takes me to the left perspective. If I go to seven, that's top, if I go to control seven, that's the bottom perspective. Now if I hit the five key, it takes me into orthographic mode uh, versus five again takes me into perspective mode. And again, look up here, it tells you where, where you're at. Now if you use two, I just was using two then to move that way or, or uh, eight to move up and over. Okay, uh, I can use six and four to orbit around that center point. If I don't have, if, 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 I, if I hold shift and say that, that the Vertice is that is selected is off screen, and I hit the period in the number pad. It centers it in the screen for me. And if I use a scroll wheel, I can scroll in and out of the scene. If I push down the scroll wheel, I can orbit around um, whatever is is selected. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and measure out this object here, and we're going to work in where each one of these units is a centimeter, okay? So if I measure this right here, let's see, I'm measuring it right across here, that is 19.61 millimeters, okay? And so I'm gonna uh, box this in a little bit here, right off the bat, and I'm gonna say 19.61 divided by two is 9.805. And I think, I think, if we're looking at the front, we should be able to see the left to right, see the servo and uh, the like. And so that was the thickness going this way. And I already forgot what that was, 9.805. And so I'm gonna type E to extrude that vertice, and then I'm gonna hit escape to make it snap back to its center point. And then I'm going to type in the command G for grab, then Y, and then type in 9.805. Now that made it ginormous, okay? Um, if I want to make it in centimeters, it wouldn't be 9.805, it'd be 0.9805. So let's do G, Y, 0.9805, okay? I'm gonna select the, the, the vertice in the center again and do, or actually I might be able to, um, yeah, that's actually cool. I'll, I'll leave that exactly like that for now. Oh, sorry folks, you're looking at me talking all the way through that. So let me go back and just show that real quick. X vertices. So I select the point in the center. I hit E to extrude. I hit escape. GY.9805. Okay, so it moved it nine millimeters out this way. 
9.8 millimeters out this way, okay? Now, I want to actually take that and then make, let's make an actual face that, uh, that a face that is half of this width here, right? So right now we've made half of the, the width of this servo this way. Now let's make a, a, a whole face that's basically on the bottom here that's half of this object, okay? All right, so then we can say E to extrude. E to extrude, right? So that's out here. I can hit escape, and then I can go G, X, and pull it out to whatever it needs to be, or, or type in the actual precision number of what we're looking at. So let's go back to this again. And I'm seeing 40.32 millimeters. So, Come on, rascal. What the devil? That's a different 40.32. How did I get a weird looking pro weird looking calculator? How about that? Okay, 40.32. Turn the number pad on, first off, okay. 40.32 divided by two. Come on, rascal. 20.16. All right, so GX needs to move 2.016. Is that right? 20.16, yep, 20.16. So that moved two centimeters, just over two centimeters, all right? So now, as we're looking at this, we can see that we now have this general face here that makes up one quarter of the bottom of this servo, all right? So let me go over here to modifier and um, I'll throw on a mirror modifier. And we are gonna mirror it in X and we're also gonna mirror it in Y. So anything we do now will do here will mirror it in in the x axis and it'll also mirror it in the y axis right so this is this is mirroring it in the x axis this is mirroring it in the y and all we have to do is deal with these four vertices right now and these four edges and it will apply to all these other ones that are kind of <clears throat> mirrored versions of them, right? So that helps out a whole lot when we're trying to go through and save time is, you know, it can, especially in this early stages, can, you know, quadruple, um, or it can, it can make one quarter the amount of effort that would normally be, so. All right, so now the next thing is, is I'm gonna go through and actually use the, this end of the, um, end of the uh, calipers. I'm making sure that the, the calipers are zeroed out so it's closed, there's it zeroed out, rascal. Closed, zeroed out. And I'm gonna basically use this back part of this to measure that distance right there, right? So that is 26.68 millimeters. All right, so then select this. Select this edge and this edge. I'm gonna hit E to extrude, escape, G to move in Z, 26.68. Of course, that was 10 times as much as I meant to. So G, Z, 2.668, all right? Cool. So there we go. So now we have a pretty good idea of just, sorry, let me back up. Okay, so I've selected these two edges here. E to extrude, GZ, 2.668. And so now we have a very good idea of 
that is basically the volume of this part of the object right here. Now you can see that these things have like little arcs, you know, around them um, on the edges and everything. They're rounded over and beveled and the like. Um, we're not worrying about that right now. We're basically trying to get this distance and this distance and this distance, and then we can put our reference in there now. Okay, so let's see, go back to here, save. So now I'm gonna hit F5, and this shows you the difference between the perspective and orthographic mode. Basically, perspective has a vanishing point and orthographic doesn't. Orthographic doesn't, never has a vanishing point. And so that's perspective, that's orthographic. Okay, so parallel lines stay parallel forever whereas with perspective, they don't. Okay, so now it's time to add, we're gonna go to the front view, and we're going to bring in an image and place it basic, as accurately as we can to uh, this object right here uh, that we're using, okay? So that, and that will give us an accurate scale. So we're gonna use background image, we're gonna add an image, we're gonna open it, um, back up a directory, back up another directory, go into our ref directory, and over, where are you? Here, we can actually see what those, um, what those images look like by clicking the display mode for thumbnails. I think this is probably a pretty good image. We'll use this one, open that. All right, so we brought that in. I can hit Z to actually make my um, faces transparent. So that's the, on the number on the keyboard, the Z. And now, and this image, we don't want to have this in all views. We only want to have it in because right now, if I go to three or seven or anything, you know, I mean any straight view, it's gonna be in there. And we don't want it in every view, we want it in basically, this is just, the, just in the front view. So if I, I'm gonna go and select this and say only in the front. So if I go to three or seven or, or alt seven, it's not there. Or even alt one from the back view, it's not there. But if I hit one, it is there. All right, so now with these down here, we can place this, we can move this around we can adjust its opacity. We're gonna leave it fully opaque for the time being. And then we can rotate it. All right, and Uh, ask where the heck is, there it is, size. I was like, I know I can scale it. All right, there we go. I can't believe I took the picture so like, and I didn't actually rotate this at all, so I'm kind of shocked. If I hold shift, it, it, well, um, it does, it moves a tenth as much. And so often when you're trying to get, you can, you'd move something uh, to get a rough placement, right? You'd let up, you'd hold shift, and you can move, it'd be a much, much finer tuned movement. So we're looking pretty good here. And again, recognize also that cameras cannot take orthographic pictures. They just can't do it. It's not possible. So um, I am, so you have to recognize that it's, it's handy to have um, this in here, but you have to recognize that, um, that <clears throat> this, isn't, this background reference image is not orthographic. So, all right. But it's super helpful in terms of getting a rough idea of 
how we how, of what the scale is of the piece and how all the pieces fit together and everything else. So, and and these this is not um, the perspective going back to this. This is like a little triangular tab part on top of uh, this plane. So that's not the face going backwards to to the vanishing point. All right, so that one's done. We're gonna go to three here, and uh, let's see here. So this is one. Boop 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 boop. So one to three. My thought is, and I'm going to select this face here to one to three. Yep, one three. Okay. So now we're going to add another image. Open. Okay, so this is the one we're using. So we want the one that has the cord facing away, which is this one. <clears throat> and we only want this in right, in the right view only. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna hold shift and fine tune it. So like we will go through and do measurements pretty much for every piece all the way through this. So you are placing these here for, for the most part, just to get a visual and to have a very first pass at how you would want to um, lay the piece out. Great. Seven, so one to seven, now it's top. So the, the horn will be over here. I will close those up, add another image, open, back, back, reference. Overhead, like this one, open image. Okay, and we want this one to only be from the top. We know it's been, they've been, both been around 12, I think. Shift, let's pull it back and forth. Okay. Great. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we have one, three, seven. And we could go for the back as well. We have the images. We might as well do it. Okay, so this is the one that we use for the front, which means this is what we will use for the back. Roughly 12. Um, we know this is the back. This one's for surprisingly a lot smaller.
control, which obviously multiplies it by 10 when you're trying to move something like that, which I don't think I ever knew that. I'm learning stuff too. All right. <clears throat> Groovy. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Okay. So one. So one, control one. Uh, three, control three. And so this one here will be open. Reference. <clears throat> I'll do this one. It's a little fiddly. But I want this to be as precise as possible because I'm going to be making, we'll be making 3D parts later on. And so this is, <clears throat> wow, weird. So this needs to be left ortho. It gets confusing very quick if you don't if you don't keep these um, placed and named. Weird. It's like that's right. I don't know if I think this is right. That looks right. Seven. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Want to make sure that the <coughs> cord is going off the same side. And this is bottom. Twelve. Clearly, it's going to be bigger than that. And the further you're away from the object, I, you know, if, <clears throat> the further you are away from the object, the more orthographic your, your um, photographs will be. I was not that far away from the object when I was taking these pictures. I was maybe a foot, foot and a half. If you're, I mean, if you get all the way across like a, you know, a 12 foot room and you zoom way in with a, <clears throat> with a you know, telephoto lens and take a picture of something, its amount of perspective is, is greatly <clears throat> diminished because it's your, it's how close you are to the object that emphasizes perspective. Okay, so there were that, that's set. <clears throat> now I can go. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I don't think I want these more than maybe 25%, really. We can turn them back more opaque if we need them, but really. Ugh. And I'm going through and making them.
Cool. There we are. So one, two. Cool. So now I'd go through and say, well, <clears throat> these edges here need to come up. Or would I deal with <clears throat> rotation of those pieces there. I don't necessarily have a plan yet. And so I'm just kind of looking at the object and making a determination of, do I go through and build the curves on that to drive it all the way up the, up the, to the top? Or do we, <coughs> get the general shape first and then dive more into uh, the actual uh, geometry and rebuilding some of that. That's more my hunch. So, okay. So the next thing I want to measure then is, okay, I'm going back to zero. I'm measuring uh, this here, and it is 2.45 millimeters. So I should be able to say E, E, escape, G, Z, 2.45. Of course, that's one-tenth of that, G, Z, 0.245. Okay, that looks about right. <clears throat> and going back here again, if I do this little trick here, it says that is 6.12 millimeters. GZ.612. All right, great. We now have these face, this face over here that can come out. So, where did you go? And how far can it come out? Six point eight. Could be wrong. Six point six nine. Six point six eight. Six point six eight. So E escape G X point six six eight. Okay. And really that is about if you look at if you look at this object here you can see that there is a seam right here underneath these edges and there's also a seam down here and i want to capture where that seam is at i'm going to capture that seam's relationship from like how far how long is it from here down to here Okay, so let's see where we at. Oh man, I gotta turn the lights on. Give me a sec. <clears throat> All right, sorry about that. Okay. There is a little knurled wheel here that helps you, for sure, go through and get those pretty exact. I think. Two point five. Okay, so that means. 
So we're gonna do something a little bit different here. And, um, and that is, we are going to go to vertice mode, select a vertice, shift S, move the, uh, shift S, move the cursor to selected. We're gonna loop cut and slide right here. And we're gonna hit escape and we'll hit zero, enter. And we're gonna set SZ zero and it won't move at all because we didn't specify the 3D cursor as what it should be scaling towards. All right, so now this is where you start to see how awesome the 3D cursor is, right? So the 3D cursor is right where that point is. I can right click on these three on this edge and it selects all three vertices. And hit S, S, Z, zero, whoop, and it moves it all the way up there. And now I have that number, I can, I can move it down this negative amount to create that seam that we saw before. So I can go G, Z minus 2.05. And now we have a seam right where, um, right where it is on the bottom of the servo. All right. Looking here also, you can see that there's like this beveled edge at the bottom of the servo too. And so that probably needs to be uh, in there as well. So let's see if we can see how, how big that is. So I'm using the knurled wheel here. says it's right at sort of a hunch I'd say it's three millimeter so that's from the bottom here up is three millimeters so we're gonna do a very similar thing right click this one here shift s cursor selected loop cut and slide down here at the bottom zero s z zero to take it down to the to the Move it towards the 3D cursor, right? And this is this is the button that allows it to to move to use the 3D cursor for these kinds of movements. And the, now we can go G Z point three, and that's now moved up three millimeter. Okay. Now I'm going to go in here and then measure across the bottom of this. How, how wide actually is that across the bottom? Like how much does that bevel come in from left to right and then from top and, top and bottom, right? So we're gonna figure those things out. So width wise, the width for that is, Sixteen point six two. All right, so that would mean we select the center here. Shift S cursor to select to select it, which is really the center of the whole thing. We had sixteen point six two. We're going to divide that by two, and that's eight point three one. And so if I select these two and I type S, Y, zero. Okay, there's something there that maybe there's an extra point or something here, so it didn't move everything. I'm gonna hit A, A to select everything. Hit W, four, and it removed five vertices. So at, uh, select this one, select this one. S, Y, zero, and it moves it back to zero. And then we know that this needs to move, be moved back out 8.31 millimeters, okay? And so now, GY.813 centimeters, there you go. Now let's do the, oh, sorry. Okay, so basically what I saw here was that um, there was some of these had some doubles there. And so I hit AA, 
W4, and it removed vertices. And they're not there right now. But so I select that, Shift S, cursor selected. I select these two, S, Y, zero. And I can move it G, Y, point eight, one, two, was it? Point eight, three, one. G Y point eight three one. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So then, now we're going to measure what the what that's that's this distance we got. Now we need to measure uh, this distance across here. So let me get that. Thirty-seven point thirty-seven point six nine. So it's thirty-seven point six nine divided by two. What a rascal this little calculator is. Thirty-seven point six nine divided by two equals eighteen point eight. Four, five. So select here, shift S, cursor selected, select these two, SX zero, GX one point eight eight four five. That's GX one point eight eight four five. Great. Okay. So now we have a really, we're pretty darn accurate with um, some of those uh, bevels and the like. Now, <clears throat> when you look at some of these here, you'll say, well, yeah, but, you know, it's doing a, it's rotating around there and everything else and, well, maybe this is the point that actually, this almost looks like the point is rotating on around there, which in some ways makes sense. So that's very interesting. And of course, you can see that these, because of the perspective, these are much smaller. If you go to the top, that's a little bit closer but it's because of this top face here is the one that's to scale, right? This is to scale, nothing else is. And so that's actually shrinking back as we, as, as in perspective. If I were to look at, well, looking at the actual um, servo, you can see that this does, this isn't quite as far out as, um, as this is. So this is, this is, this is thicker than this um, ledge here. So, how much difference is that? That's, uh, it's not as much as it looks here. This is an exaggerated, this is an exaggerated angle because of the perspective. <clears throat> Zero. All right. It says 0.46 millimeters. All right, so 0.46 millimeters in. So I am going to take the loop cut and slide. I'll put it there, zero, okay? And um, 
I'm going to select this and do Shift S, cursor is selected, and select this and this, actually A, because there's two heights of that, right? There's a top and bottom of that. I will type in S, Y, 0, then G, Y, minus, point, zero four six okay and um, let's do the same thing right here hmm this is when you go I wonder if I should just make a triangle there and we're gonna we're gonna be rebuilding this corner for the rotation of that there and down here and the like so do we mess with that right now? Hmm. What am I do here? I don't know how I feel about that yet. Uh, to be honest, I do feel that that's actually, that that looks to be um, the origin of this curve right here. It's so close that it should be. <laughs> it should be if it's not. <clears throat> so I'm going to select that, do a shift S, cursor select to make sure we're there. Um, I don't know that I should have put this in here yet. This may be something that, you know, because essentially that needs to go away. So let's go to Z. This then, so X, this face needs to go away. This one, this one, and this one. X need to all go away. And then we I switch to line select, select those two, hit F and it puts a face there. And I'll select this one and this one, push F, and it puts a face there as well. Okay. So now, let's go back to seven, go to the top, hit Z. We're there. Um, I'm gonna do this. I don't like it, but I'm gonna do it because I, I don't. I can't. F I don't like it yet, but I'm gonna do it because I think it's the right thing to do. S Y zero to move that there. Now undo that. Undo those selections. S Y zero. It moved these two to the right spot. But this one here is not. So this, if there's a curve here, that will not be correct for this. Um, maybe the solution, shift S, cursor is selected, is to throw another loop here, zero, do that. S, Z, zero to move it down there. This is now, oop, go to the top view, shift S, cursor selected to select that again, and make sure that that's S, Y, zero. Do that. Let's do that down here too, zero. Right click, shift S, cursor selected. Alt right click to select that um, line. S Z zero to move it up to here. Groovy. Click that. Right click that. Shift S cursor selected. Uh, select the this vertice there. S Y zero. Kind of move it into place. And 
S Y zero. Is that going to make sense? It's made a triangle down there. If we did a loop cut, if we did a merge vertices, it would be a triangle down there. Um, we're going to do a loop cut and slide here. Zero. Right click that, Shift S, cursor selected. Uh, right click that, right alt click that, S, X, zero. Okay, and so now we'll go above, look at that. And so now, <clears throat> whoa, Z, I'm gonna hit A, A, and Control N to recalculate the normals outside. That's why some of those were looking dark and weird, is that um, the normals were actually flipped inside. And the normal is essentially which way the face is pointing. So the face was actually pointing into the model instead of out of the model. And that's why it looks so weird. So. Again, so it's actually, if you look inside, see it looks normal. But the outside it looks dark and it's operating the wrong way. So control N fixes that problem. Okay, so, so we don't actually need some of this geometry anymore. We don't need these pieces. X faces. We're not going to need Z. We're not going to need these pieces either probably. X faces. Um, probably won't need these X faces. So we'll right click this. That's already selected there. I'm going to select these here. Okay, I'm going to do AA, W, 4 to remove doubles. And when you hit, how I know it's 4 is it's the 4th from the top in this menu. So if I hit W, it brings up this specials menu, and I hit 4, and it removes the doubles. So that means I'm going to take this, 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 and this. We go from 7, we go from the top, we look down. And now we can actually spin this around to go here. Now, how many do we want to spin? I'm going to hit this over here. I'll hit the spin tool, and it spins things. And it spun at 90 degrees. And um, so oddly, or maybe not so oddly, that I don't think that's accurate. It may be that A, B, spin negative 90. That looks a whole lot more accurate. Now, I wouldn't put nine steps through here. I might put eight. Four is probably not enough, right? And um, so I'm gonna put like eight, eight going through there to keep a pretty good, um, good amount of vertices there to keep that shape. All right. And now I'm going to select this, Shift S, cursor selected. Now, this is a challenge here. Because I'm going to undo that. And what I'm essentially going to figure out here is, is that this and this, it would be a whole lot easier if those two things, if these were exactly the same length. If I select that, I can go over here and I can write, I can click on this edge length and it will tell me that that is 0 0.3352 and this is 0 0.3276. I'm actually going to pull out a pad of paper and get and write those numbers down. So 0.3276, and this is 0.3352. So this could be a little bit, you know, we do know that this width is right. 
and we know this length is, is right as well. The most important thing is, is that we don't, I don't want to move this in to make that arc look right. I want to move this back so that, that this arc is, is better, that this arc is equal. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to have to show it. It's, I'm having a hard time explaining it. Okay, so let's pull up the calculator. And so we have 0.3352 minus 0.3276 equals 0 0.0076. So that means this needs to move 0 0.00076 millimeters. A, and I know that's kind of getting crazy ridiculous. Um, so A, B, we're going to box select all of that. And now we're going to move G, X minus 0 0.00076. All right. Now I can select this. Shift S, cursor selected. A, B to box select, box select that. And we can spin in positive 90 degrees. Why that didn't work, I have not a clue. I do know why it didn't work, because I added that extra zero. So if I go back here and measure this again, that is still 0 0.3276. Hit A to deselect everything, B to box select, the box select uh, that edge all the way through there. I'm going to go G X minus 0.0076. There we go. Select that. Shift S. Cursor selected. A B. Select that. Spin. And <laughs> it still doesn't match up. <sighs> So let's look at this. That is 0 0.3307. That is 0 0.3352. minus 0 0.3307 is 0 0.0045. B for box select, G, X minus 0 0.0045. So shift S, cursor selected, A, B, select that, spin, oh my god, what is going on? Point zero zero point three three two six point three three five two point three three five two minus point three three two six is point zero zero two six. I think we may be getting like that I may we may be like so small in numbers that Blender can't handle it. I don't know. Maybe I should have made it, you know, in millimeters instead of centimeters. So, A. The other solution is, how about this? I can do this. Shift S, cursor selected, A, B, S, Y, zero, come on, S, X, zero, G, X, minus, point 
0.3352. Am I moving the wrong one? This is this is 335.3352. This is 0.3326. A. So we want this to be 0.3352. And we've got that selected, B, so we're going to S, X, 0, G, X, minus 0.3352. G, X, minus 0 0.0352. OK. Oh, OK. I know what the problem is. How about no the scale is fine. Sometimes scale, the scale will not be correct. And so when you're trying to move these things around, um, okay. So anyway, what we're going to do now. This is how we can eyeball it. I can select this here, Shift S, cursor selected, select this one, E, extrude, escape, R, Z, 90. So undo that, R, Z, minus 90. And so now I can select that and B. Box select all of that, and then zoom way, way in on this. And go G X, group, G X. You can hit period on the number thing. Oops, no I can't. I was hoping I can, but I have to keep those other things selected too, or it defeats the purpose. Yeah, that's about as close as it's going to get. So I will select that, X, vertice, select that, Shift S, cursor is selected, A, to deselect, B to box select. Cool. Spin, eight units, 90 degrees. Here's a real test, A, A, W4. Did it actually, it did. See, that's the real test, is did it connect with these things? And it looks like it did. I can't believe I got it that close. Cool. Um, you can see here that there's that there's a there's an empty part there, and we were worried about all about the triangle down there. Well, there won't be a triangle now because we can do this thing. So since we did we did eight across there, this should work nicely. So we'll one two three down here. Hit F. One two three. This one F. One two three. This one, F, one, two, three, this, F. Cool. All right. And remember now, since we're mirroring all this stuff, this is all happening on all four sides at once. Okay, you can see a problem here too, that if I turn this off real quick, it'll be a lot easier to see, is that there's a face right here, and that face shouldn't be there. So I'm going to select it, select it, X, whoops, not the vertices, X faces, there it goes. We'll turn this back on again. Cool. So we still have a little bit of an issue with, uh, the, you know, this, this curves around here and this isn't tying into it and those types of deals, but we will get that, we'll get that figured out in short 
order. I can see that there is like a weird Z. There's a weird like tiny face down there. Oh, I see it. X face. There's one down here too. X face. <clears throat> Okay, so these now need to, um, it might be nice before we try and deal with um, these pieces, and this is definitely, I'm definitely getting to the point to where I need to bring up the, the Wacom tablet thing. For some reason, um, this is not set up, so I want to have this set up where this is my right click and this is my middle click okay so that just lets me then do this kind of craziness cool so before we in a, integrate this stuff into this shape out here it probably be best to get this like circle shape in here first and then this here too has a, a round over as well and so getting all of that would be good. Um, and my hunch is this and this may be roughly the same size. Um, so, and trying to get this stuff, I, I guarantee you this tab runs down the middle of this whole tab, and so measuring this distance and splitting it in half is probably the best way to get this length. Um, and then we can measure this to get this length. Um, I don't you know measuring here to here. I don't think I don't know if that circle fully makes it out there. Um, I don't know. But we also have this little triangle tab like piece that we have to get in there as well. So, all right, how are we gonna do this? Which, which is first? All right, so Oop, shut off. Zero it out. And that is 7.33 millimeters. What the devil? Three point six six five. Okay, so we cut and slide. We'll do this zero. Vertice select mode, select that vertice, shift S, cursor selected, A, B, box select that, S, Y, zero, G, Y, point, three, six, six, five, wow, that not only here, but down here looks just about perfect. All right, so if this is about perfect here, we can then just, it's easy if you just put a cylinder through here that visually matches up there and then double check the size of it. And um, if it works, you know, hot dog.
Okay, so now we're going to use uh, these, this side here to get this width. And my head isn't on that side. Make sure to zero out again. Twelve point five five. Twelve point five six. So 6.28. So we will loop cut slide up here. S, Y, 0. G, Y, point 6.28. I mean, holy cow, that's so close. That's so close that, yeah, I think, uh, what, what I will do is I'll measure in this distance here to where this curve ends. And then, because maybe it's compressing more this way than it is perspective-wise than it is vertically. And that is such a teeny tiny. I don't know how to measure that. That's ridiculous. Point seven five millimeters. S X zero G X minus point zero seven five. Okay, so that's where so yeah, that's exactly right. So this should be where this is. So this this offset here and this is Okay. Yeah. So let's put we're gonna put a cylinder in here. Hold on a second here. Now we'll just do it. Shift A. We don't need a cylinder, just need a circle. And um, eight, so 32 is the same amount for this corner here. It'd be 32 if we did a full circle. And um, so we're going to bring this down. We're going to leave that there. We're going to turn off the edge length. And over here, as long as we don't... Um, foul it up. Uh, we can go through and change some aspects of of the construction of this circle. So hold shift. OK. 
Okay, that's cool. Hold shift again. Groovy. All right, so now <clears throat> we know this circle needs to move this way this much. Okay, so if we just knew how far that was, we would know how much this how much this circle needs to move this way. Escape. Hold shift. So we should be able to E escape G X pull this way there. Turn on edge length for an edge. So 0 0.075 is what it says. That's the wrong one. That's the other one. If I'd only, <laughs> okay, so this one and this one, and now switch to line mode, it is 0 0.0397, 0 0.039, point, point 0 0.0397. So then go back to vertice mode. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that vertice. I'll do a right alt click on that. I'll turn off edge length. GX.03097. Go from the top view. Cool. All right, so now we can do a shift S, cursor selected. So now we're, we have the, the center of uh, this shape. We want to essentially line it up with um, this to be lined up with this line, this to be lined up with this line. Now it's a little bit It's a little bit off. Now that may be that this was installed in a robot before and it's moved some things around. Um, I'm going to, I'll just hit period on that, zoom in on this, and I, I still have the, um, over here, I still have the 3D cursor in the dead center. I'm going to do an R, Z, and I'm going to pull it up to here, and I'm going to just mash it up to that line. R, Z, holding shift. There we go. There's that line. Move even more. R, Z. Cool. That's as far as it'll go in anyway. And go here to this one, dead center, RZ, RZ, don't hold shift this time so it gets closer, and I'll go period, period in the number pad to center it, RZ, that's as far as in as it will go, cool, there we go. So. Clearly not perfect because you know there's something strange here and here that's not that doesn't look quite right. But I'm not going to get too worried about it. 
Okay, I'm going to select these though. I'm going to hit X and delete the verses. And I'm going to rotate this this way. Hold Shift, so click on that. Hold Shift S, cursor to select. Uh, right click this, S Z, so it's there. And now we need to extrude it up to here. So select this, Shift S, cursor is selected to move the 3D cursor up here. Right, Alt select, and E to extrude, hit Escape, S Z zero. Cool. There we go. Um, face Z. So clearly. Loop, cut, and slide, clearly. Uh, we're gonna need something like that there. And so this can come out, X, face, X, face, X, face, X, face, X, face. Okay. So if we go to 7, and hit Z, and we're going to go to vertices. I actually think this is a pretty good spot right here. Shift S, cursor selected. This is a good spot to insert a um, loop, cut, and slide on both sides here. So I'm going to go here, 0, S, X, 0. Loop, cut, and slide there, 0, S, X, 0. A, A, W, 4, nothing, didn't move a thing. Um, but now I can select this to this, Alt M to last, this to this, to last, this to this, Alt M to last. Hmm. Z. Hmm, okay. So shift S, cursor selected, loop cut and slide down here, zero, S, Y, zero, undo that, S, X, zero, <coughs> here to here, M to last. <coughs> Okay, this one, same thing here. I could probably put one through here on both sides. We can probably put one all the way through, vertically speaking, too, there. So these aren't connected, so that's something that needs to be fixed anyway. So I think this is the shift S cursor. Oops. Undo that. Period. Center that. Seven. Yes, that's right. Z. Shift S. Cursor selected. A, B. And this is S, Y, zero. A. B, 
Oops. A B S Y zero. Hmm. S Y zero. There we go. Cool. A A W four. Cool. It merged some automatically. It merged these the, here and here automatically. <coughs> Okay, before I get too carried away, because I can immediately see that we're gonna put one through here, one through here, top and bottom. But before I get too carried away, let's get this curve taken care of. If I were to like reverse engineer what we did before, let's say how do we solve that problem by having two that don't fit quite right? I would say this curve starts here. Okay. And shift S, shift S. Cursor selected. Come on, rascal. Shift S, cursor selected. A, B. Select all these, including this little guy down here. And we're going to S, Y, 0. Okay. Have this one here. And E, extrude. R, Z, 90. That is actually a lot like that right there. Okay. okay, so there's that. And so I'm gonna do a loop, cut, and slide here. I'll do one right here, zero. I'm gonna do another one right here, zero. I'm gonna select this, Shift S, cursor selected. Do that, right, Alt right click. SX zero. Okay. Edge wise, I can get rid of that now. Okay, and these can go away. X faces seven. And um, I'm going to keep this edge thing wrap around here so that we have this topology to be able to run over over here. So I'm not gonna take this one and pull this one here. I'm gonna take this one and pull it that way. So get that, select the shift S, cursor selected, and then we will select these. I might actually do that as edges instead of uh, vertices. Seven, we're going to then Z, then we will spin negative 90. A, A, W, 4, did it do it? Hey, look at that. That's cool. Um, so we can do a loop cut slide here, zero. Select the vertices, shift S. Cursor selected, Alt right click that, SY zero. Loop cut and slide here, zero, SY zero, AAW four. Cool, that merged those in. Okay. 
and select these two, hit F. Link those quads. Same thing up here. Although in computer graphics, everything eventually turns back into triangles again, you still want to use quads if you can. So, I think this can go here. Alt M, last. Alt M, last. Cursor selected. Select that whole ring, SX0, groovy. Could probably run another edge along here back to there too. But let's try and deal with some of these that are already here. Cool, there's that. Select, cursor select. Alt right click, SX0, took this to this, Alt M, last, this to this, Alt M, la last. I think that these Y zero, oops, right click, escape, right click, S Y zero. Now that is a drag, but it wants to go that direction. So what we're gonna do is, we're, I'm gonna use the knife tool to put another um, edge through here, okay? And so you hold, K, you, you push K, if you hold control, it'll select the, either the center or the edge of the face that, of the edge you're trying to get. So if I hold control and just go through here, it will get the center of those. Okay, same thing down here. Okay, hold control. You can do multiples at once if you know it's kind of a straight line. Everything's square, you can do that. Groovy. Um, now for sure, this can go here. This can go here. Alt M, move it, merge it to la the, the last. This can go here. Alt M, merge to last. Um, how do I feel about all of this? I don't know. I'm going to just move, merge that to there. It's not going to be square on both sides or absolutely perfect, but that's okay. Okay. to make that a face there. So now if I want to go through and make, like in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to make one, two, 
three, four different, um, pretty much equidistant um, loop cuts there. So I'm gonna go, I can go here, select that, and I can roll with the scroll, the mouse bar there, the mouse wheel. And um, there we have four cuts. And so I can then select this. I can pull back and forth. And um, can I go to seven? Nope. Undo that. And so I'm gonna go to above and uh, do some of this because it might be a little bit easier. Loop, cut, and slide. Select here, three, four. And then I'm gonna move those there. Okay. And um, I'll do the same thing down below. And now that I'm even into it, I was gonna try and place them, but you know what? It's just like maybe pointless. So what I can do, because what I wanna do now is I wanna select this. I'm gonna select that part there. Cursor is selected. A to deselect. B to select all of this. I'm gonna SX zero, okay? Select this one, shift S, cursor selected, A to deselect, B, select these edges, SX zero. This one here, shift S, cursor selected, A, B, SX zero. Right click here, shift S, cursor selected, A, B, SX zero. A, A. Okay, so now top and bottom are in line, and now I can just go through and merge these two. Now, if this were like like an um, if this were a piece that, or I was just making for let's say um, an animation, I would not have, I am putting way more geometry in here than I would have for an animated model. I'm using this so that we're fairly precise. Um, we don't have to even throw a subdivision surface on this for the most part. Um, we could to get a little bit smoother edges, you know, on a smoother arcs on some of these curves, but for the most part, it's really, you know, and yeah, we could probably go through and, you know, add bevels to these as well. I imagine if I really look closely, they have bevels on them. Oh, not really. But definitely, they're not, you know, 3D models are always sharper than what things are in life. But we're trying to make something that's, you know, the, the, the first, it, it's nice if it looks like it, but even more important is that it, that it is the exact, exact same size. Um, now looking at some of these here, I go, huh, let's, looking at this, I go, why don't we just, and I don't know what this distance is here. I don't think it's, I, don't, I think that was just like, just random. Shift S, cursor selected. Right click, oop. Right click, select that, and this. Okay. Right click, select those. SX, zero, to move them, to be perfectly centered between those two. I think that maybe this one we can probably I don't know how I feel about that now. Well, let's 
So one, two, three, four, shift S, cursor selected. Cool, we're gonna do a one down here also at the same time. So this one, shift, alt shift, so SX zero, okay. And here to here, alt M last. M last. <clears throat> Loop, cut, and slide. One, two, three. Zero. Loop, cut, and slide. One, two, three. Zero. Select that one. Shift, oop, shift S. Cursor is selected. Alt right click. Alt right click, SX zero, select this one, shift S, alt click, alt shift right click, SX zero, shift S, alt right click, shift alt right click, SX zero. Sometimes when you get into these situations, I go, huh, let's just make a bunch of tries and then we'll turn them into quads later on. I mean, that is the weirdest quad right there. I do not like that at all. Um... So if this one, two, three, four were to run up through there, I think that would be cool. Loop, cut, and slide. One, two, there we go. a similar thing over here we did before we're here shift s cursor selected loop cut and slide there sx zero cool and then one two three so we're gonna loop cut and slide that for three one two three zero shift s Cursor selected, alt right click, SX zero. Right click, shift S, cursor selected, alt right click, SX zero. Shift S, cursor selected, alt right click, SX zero. All right, alt M to last, whoops. Alt M to last. Alt M to last. Alt M to last. Okay. All right. So now. We will run 
One, two, three. Cool. All right. And over here, same thing. One, two, three. <clears throat> cool. We are approaching two hours. I have a feeling we're gonna hold it right there for right now. But look, we have come a long way. I think we're over halfway in terms of the modeling. I am pretty sure. I mean, there are certain, you know, definitely I could look at it and say, well, topology wise, why is there no edge running through there? And these aren't hooked up to this part of the part yet. Running down through there. I will probably make this all one part. <clears throat> I don't like to have like a whole lot of edges and then none. And a whole lot, you know, I like to have it be fairly um, even if possible. But things are looking, looking de decent right now. Cool. So, anyway, I think we're we're we are definitely getting there. It's uh, you know, it's a, it is a process, <laughs> but but you know, this will be an accurate model, and uh, there's plenty of geometry there. Even if we did throw a subdivision surface on there, there's plenty of geometry for it to be darn close, and that's the goal, you know, is to have enough geometry that the subdivision surface it'll add some smoothing if you're, you're going to throw it onto there uh, for 3D printing or whatever, or for the part that you're making that this should fit into. You know, that's, that's the whole point of going through and building um, the servo uh, uh, to scale is so that when you're actually adding it to another part that you're, that you're creating, that when you're creating that part, that that part will work with the servo that you already have. And, you know, I already have, I have quite a few... Uh, servos already modeled out to at least this detail, but I don't have any for this one yet. And so, um, and we have I have like five or six of these guys. And I went, okay, well, and I looked at the other models, and they are different enough that you know I wanted to make sure that the distance from this base to the top of of the the um, gear here was the same, and all that stuff. And I know I could have done a quick measurement to determine that and tweak it, but uh, I thought it was also important and a, and a good opportunity to just show the process of how I go through and do precision modeling and uh, the like. And yeah, I think I think it's pretty cool. I think it's coming along nicely. And and uh, I hope you found it interesting. And if you like it, the content, be sure to share, like, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell deal. And uh, other than that, you know, keep making awesome stuff. So, toodaloo.